Hi, I'm Cheryl Ann from Cherry Lanes, previously known as Cherry Lanes Cupcakes. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. And for those who have stuck around while I went on a five year hiatus from YouTube, and you probably have no idea why or when you even subscribed, thank you so much for sticking around and being so extremely patient with me. If any of you would like a little explanation of what I've been up to in the past five years and why I stopped filming, please leave a comment in the comments below and maybe I'll do a little explainer thing if enough people want to know, I guess, but it's really not all that interesting. All right, enough talking. Let's get straight into what you'll need to make these Mandarin Ang Pao butter cookies. Firstly, let's prepare all the materials that we need. You will need to make at least one rectangle cutout and about four to seven of these pointy looking molds. Ensure you have all these materials ready before you begin. You will need sticky tape, I'm just using masking tape here, a pen, a ruler, some tabs, cardboard, some paper, preferably like a thin card paper, some aluminum foil, and of course, some scissors. Make sure the cardboard you are using is approximately two to three millimeters thick because we're going to use that to make the molds to create the money slots in your cookies. Start by measuring and cutting out these two shapes on a bit of card paper, following the measurements on the screen. Trace these shapes onto your cardboard, cut them out and wrap them in foil. You can tape the back of your rectangle cutout, but not the pointy ones as the pointy molds will be baked in with your cookies. Next, cut out and fold these shapes to make your money holders. This is just to prevent dirty money from directly touching your cookies. I've left a link in the description below for you to be able to simply download and print out the stencil shapes for your convenience. You will need to make at least seven of these and simply stick your tab in the middle section as shown and fold at the dotted lines and seal it with a bit of tape. Once you're done preparing all these materials, set it aside and let's start making our cookies. You will need one and a half cups of plain flour, which is 200 grams that I used, then minus one tablespoon and replace that with one tablespoon of corn flour, a quarter teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, quarter teaspoon of salt, half a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature, which is 115 grams that I used, three quarters of a cup of icing sugar, which is 90 grams that I used, one large egg white, the zest of one large mandarin, this one here is about 240 grams, and two tablespoons of fresh mandarin juice that you will use from this same mandarin. You'll need an extra half a cup of plain flour for dusting and your already prepared molds. Start by rinsing your mandarin thoroughly and pat it completely dry and set aside. Next, sift all of your dry ingredients together in a medium sized bowl and mix it thoroughly to ensure all of your dry ingredients are evenly mixed throughout. In a large bowl, Whip your room temperature softened butter using a stand or hand electric mixer and beat the butter on high until it looks smooth and creamy like this. To that, sift in your icing sugar, also known as confectioner's or powdered sugar, ensuring you gently press in all of the clumps through the sift. Start on a low setting so that your icing sugar doesn't just poof up everywhere. And once it starts to slowly combine, Beat it on a medium to high speed until your mixture looks light and fluffy. Don't forget to scrape down the sides as you go along to ensure everything is evenly mixed throughout. Now, separate your egg yolk from your egg white by simply cracking your egg and tossing the yolk between the shells to allow the egg white to fall into the bowl. Ensure you're using the freshest eggs as the fresher your eggs, the better the yolks will hold, preventing it from breaking and impurifying your egg whites. Simply add the egg white into your butter mixture and beat on a low to medium speed until everything looks well incorporated like this. After beating a wet mixture, I like to make sure that I get as much of the batter off my whisk attachments by allowing the whisk to spin on high for a few seconds in the bowl, like so, before I put it aside as that helps to prevent any of the batter from dripping onto my counter. Next. Grate the zest of your mandarin directly into your wet mixture. Be sure to use a mandarin instead of oranges, as mandarins have a much stronger and sweeter flavour compared to oranges. Ensure you don't put too much pressure when grating your mandarin, as it might cause your hand to slip and you might cut yourself. So if you're a kid, you might want to ask an adult for help or be extra careful with this step. 
Try to get as much of the zest off your grater and mix thoroughly until it looks something like this. Then cut and juice your mandarin and set it aside for later. Now, add in your already sifted and thoroughly mixed dry ingredients into your wet mixture and beat on low for about 20 seconds until it is slightly incorporated, looking like coarse crumbs. Add two tablespoons of your freshly squeezed mandarin juice into your mixture and beat on low for about 10 to 15 seconds until it just comes together and looks something like this. Now, simply pour a quarter cup of plain flour that was set aside for dusting previously onto your work surface spreading it around and coating your hands before scraping down the sides of your bowl and plopping your mixture onto your floured surface. It is completely normal for your dough to be a little bit sticky. Now, gently knead your dough till it stops sticking on your hands too much. It is really important for you to generously coat your hands in flour before touching your dough or it will stick everywhere. Be careful not to add too much flour or over knead your dough though. So I recommend ensuring you only put a quarter cups of flour or even less down on your counter before kneading. Try to work somewhat quickly and gently in this part so that the heat from your hands won't continuously melt the butter, forcing you to accidentally add way too much flour for your dough. And soon as your dough looks something like this, where you can pick it up quite easily but it's still soft, wrap it up securely in plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge for at least two hours or overnight. Personally, I like to leave the dough in the fridge overnight to ensure it completely firms up, making it so much easier to roll out after. But wait, before we go on rolling out our chilled dough, we need to lightly flour our pointy molds by simply dipping them in some plain flour so as to prevent it from getting stuck in our cookie after. Now, divide your chilled dough into two and keep half wrapped in the fridge until you're ready to work with it. If you refrigerated your dough overnight, Gently warm the dough up slightly between your hands by firmly squeezing the dough, then roll it out on a thoroughly floured surface. Do, do, do. And when it's about a centimetre thick, use an angled spatula to scrape the bottom of your dough to ensure it is not stuck on your workbench. Then add more flour under and continue rolling it until it's about four millimetres thick. Now, using your rectangle cutout, Place it over your dough and gently slice it into shape until you use up all your dough. Line a baking tray with parchment paper, carefully place one layer of dough down, and the pointy mold should be in the middle above it like so. Beat an egg and dip your finger in it to use it as a glue to bind the cookies together. Then very gently, place the second layer over the top and lightly tap on the edges to bind the cookie without denting the dough. Then lightly run your finger along the edges to smoothen and seal the cookie. And although not necessary, if you prefer a bit of a firmer, crunchier cookie, you can poke holes on the top and bottom before baking to allow the cookie to bake a little bit faster. Now, stick your cookies into the fridge for about a minute until it's slightly chilled, and ensure your oven is preheated at 170 degrees Celsius using the convection fan force setting, ensuring the heat comes from the top and the bottom and bake in the middle rack of your oven at 170 degrees for five minutes, then down to 160 degrees for three minutes, and down to 135 degrees for two minutes. Remove your cookies and let them cool completely before removing the molds and sticking it back into the oven at 135 degrees Celsius for about eight to 10 minutes to allow the inside of the cookies to bake while still keeping its shape. I recommend baking it in only batches of two at a time so you can experiment with your timings to see how long you need to leave it in there to achieve your preferred cookie textures. Soon as you remove it for the second time, quickly slide your mold in and out of the cookie to ensure the insides hasn't bloated too much. Now let it cool completely as we go ahead to begin preparing our royal icing to decorate your mandarin angbao cookies. So, for the royal icing, all you need is one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, one and a half cups of icing sugar, and one large egg white. For simplicity's sake, we're only gonna design a really simple angbao. So you will only need two colors and two varied consistencies, flood and border icing. Flood icing is basically a thinner, more watery version of border icing. It is what gives these cookies its smooth red finish. And border icing is what keeps flood icing in its lane. 
So border icing is thicker and flood icing is much thinner. Let's start with getting the right consistency for your flood icing. So you start by sifting your icing sugar and you set that aside. Roughly mix up your egg whites to loosen it up, add the lemon juice and mix on low until it looks something like this. You could even just use a hand whisk for this. Now, gradually add in your icing sugar. Note that we are not using all of the sugar for the flood icing, so you need to pay close attention to the consistency. Keep mixing on low until when you lift your mixer out of the mixture, it drips down and fades back in after a few moments. Now, spoon slightly more than half of your flood icing into a small bowl. Cover the bowl in plastic wrap and keep aside to add your red food coloring later. Make sure to cover it or the icing will dry out and form a crust very quickly. Next, we make the border icing by simply adding the rest of your icing sugar or more if needed, depending on how much icing you separated out, and gradually mix it till its consistency looks somewhat thicker than mayonnaise. Cover it with plastic wrap and set aside. For the food coloring, I recommend using a gel food coloring as its colors are usually a lot more vibrant and you don't run the risk of thinning your icing out too much. Here I'm using Wilton's Christmas Red and I put a generous amount so that my red icing would look extra deep and vibrant. Stir the color in till there are no more streaks that you can see. Now, using two small hold piping tips, use the smallest one that you have for the red flood icing and the other one for your border icing. Royal icing is very flowy, so make sure to use the smallest tips that you can find. Once you get your piping tip in, cut a hole in the tip of your bag, ensuring you don't go crazy like me until your tip just falls right out. Make sure that when you push on the tip, it feels tight and secure. Twist the tip of the bag and push it into the tip like so to prevent the royal icing from running out as you pour your icing in. Use a tall glass or jar Place your piping bag over it and spoon away, twisting off the end securely. You can even use a rubber band to make sure it doesn't unravel. Do the same with your white border icing and let's get decorating. A little tip, if you're not so precise with piping things freehand, use a toothpick and draw a guide for your pattern. Here, I'm going to draw a little fool character on them and turn my cookie as I try to make the circle around it as evenly rounded as possible. Fu is a Chinese character that means fortune and good luck, which is everything Chinese people love, but they don't love very sweet desserts, so this cookie really isn't overwhelmingly sweet at all. Start with your border icing, piping on the character, circle, and rectangle border. Once that's dried, you can mix a drop of vodka or gin with some edible gold luster dust, or you can also use water, but alcohol evaporates faster, allowing the gold to dry in your icing more effectively. I only had whiskey, so that's what I used, and you want to mix in your luster dust into almost a thin paste. Paint the parts that you want to make gold, then we're ready to add your red flood icing. Make sure you have a clean toothpick on standby as you gradually flood your cookie, using the toothpick to smooth it out, working on small sections at a time. Once that's all dried up, put the money in your money slots and gently slide that right into your cookie, and you're done! These cookies are just a little bit sweet and a little bit tangy, just like your auntie, who will probably ask you, when are you gonna get married? But remember, if you ain't married, you don't need to give people unpassive money in them. So you can just write a little sing yen kuai le and just some well wishes instead. And here's a little tip. You can color code your tabs depending on how much money you put in it or who is supposed to receive which. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Facebook or Instagram and follow me on those platforms if you'd like to be one of the first to see some of the crazy ideas I try to work on. I can't wait to see all the amazing Ang Pao cookie designs that you guys come up with. Please do send them to me and till next time, I'm Cheryl Ann from Cherry Lanes.